Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hello, people of Podcast World. I and my co-host Rachel will be your guides throughout today's coolest stuff exploration. Welcome to our podcast, people of Podcast Land. <laughs> nice, to, <laughs> nice to see you. See in quotes. See you again. Yes, very much. Today's coolest stuff, everyone, is slightly different from what we've been covering over the past few weeks and months. Today we're going to look at one of the world's coolest public transportation systems. I saw this tree hugger article. I saw a couple other ones, but it was specifically this tree hugger one on the world's greatest subways. I have a personal fascination with public transportation. Mm-hmm. So here's my personal anecdote, Matt. Okay. I'm a country girl who moved to the big city. I've been using public transportation for the last four or five years mm-hmm. or so. And I don't know, there's just something interesting to me about these systems. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, welcome to the Parisian Metropolitan, or Le Metro. This system was opened on the 19th of July in the year 1900 of Our Lord, of course, just in time for the World's Fair. It is, by the way, the second oldest subway system in the world, and it has just train loads of personality. <laughs> train loads. Nice. Yes. The Paris Metro is famous for its, um, its wonderful Art Nouveau architecture, and especially these entrances. These are fabulous, Matt. I just I would go just to stare at these entrances and just be awed. Each station has just great personality, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And you can thank um, a lot of the Art Nouveau touches of the Paris Metro to this young architect named Hector Guimard. And uh, he had kind of this unique artistic vision for the Paris Metro system so that you you see his touches there. So the Paris Metro includes more than 360 stations connected by 14 interconnected intersecting lines, which are really, it's really cool to look at. It's more of a, more of a grid than a lot of metro stations and a lot of metro systems that I've seen and ridden on before. Oh yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's one of the most highly trafficked metro systems in the world. It services around 6 million people a day. Wow. Huge amount of people go through this thing every day. And the high traffic is mostly due to the densely packed, tourist-filled city. But the other big factor is that, according to Paris.org and a couple other places, every building in Paris stands within 500 meters of a metro station. Which is how many yards? Uh, it's 547. Yeah, so pretty much everywhere you go in the city or everywhere you are at one time, you're going to be very close to a metro station. At least in the city proper. Mm-hmm. And that's another point. Even though Paris is, is said to be a very walkable city, people still say that the metro is, is a really good option for getting around. It's affordable. It's well laid out. And as we said, it's there's a stop everywhere. Mm-hmm. So another really neat fact about the metro, <laughs> I really like this. I was reading this NPR article on on the Metro, and it was talking about these, um, it called them phantom stations. Intriguing. And they were stations that used to be, you know, stations that were in use, and then um, they were abandoned uh, during World War II, and so now they're not used anymore, but they're still there. Oh, wow. Oh, P.S. The Paris Metro that we're talking about is made up of two separate systems. So there's the Metropolitan, that's the one that we've mostly been talking about that runs underneath Paris proper. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the RER, or in English it's translated to the Regional Express Networks. And these connect the more suburban areas outside of the city into the Metropolitan underneath Paris itself. Right, right. It's really great for commuters, and it's really great to go visit some of the smaller places outside of Paris, like... uh, places you'd want to visit that, that you can't access from right, the Metro. Right, right. And it gives the, the system more reach. So one thing I noticed when I was reading about the uh, the Metro, I just I just noticed it over and over and over. They are apparently very strict about fare jumping and checking fares. Mm-hmm. So people always advise, they say, keep your ticket or your pass or whatever you have on you because you can get fined if you're caught without it. Oh, wow. So even if you're standing inside, say, getting ready to hop on a train, if you don't have it on you, I don't Even know if, if, it's, if it's there. Well, I don't know if it's you're on the train and they're checking it then. Hmm. Might be. Yeah, I don't know if it's if you're in the station and they check. But yeah, just reminded me of trains in general. You know how the the you know the the checker will come along and sure. he'll make sure you have your ticket or she will. All right, everyone. I think that's pretty much it. We've covered the Paris Metro. If you'd like to learn more about the city Paris or the subway system, or subway systems in general, you should check out HowStuffWorks.com. There, we've got a great article on subway systems in general, and then uh, several on Paris. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, or check out some of our other episodes. 
about the Eiffel Tower and other things in Paris. Yeah, we've done a little bit of Paris here and there. So, yeah. And I guess that's it, Matt. That's it for now. So we will say, we will bid you adieu. Yes, We will, will bid the city of Paris adieu for now. Mm-hmm. We'll probably come back at some point because it's a cool city. But then we will see you next time for more cool stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. Thank you.